views and opinions expressed by Edwin are Edwin and Edwin's only, all right? Not of his sponsors, employers, baby mama, anybody he went to school with, anybody he owe money to. With that being said, enjoy the video. Oh my goodness, what's going on everyone? Edwin Pagan here. Thanks for joining me on the Word on the Road podcast, your weekly technology care package. Man, I am your host, Edwin Pagan. Man, it's a weekly podcast uh, that I do every Wednesday. Uh, I don't know why I'm talking so low. <laughs> Bro, I've been doing videos all day and so like I've been like watching myself. I'm like, dude, why you? like there's times when you're like when you're um when you're podcasting and when you're teaching and I feel like my voice changes and the way I communicate changes where I go from like being very professional, you know, like this and to like trying to get loosely and so like uh i think i'm battling it with that right now but with that being said guys back to the topic at hand this is the uh we're on the road podcast this is a weekly technology care package i do uh every wednesday where i take three articles from the internet i give you my insights on them uh my analysis i break them down for you and then i send you on your way uh more informed and more aware of the things going on on the interwebs man with that being said man, i hope everyone's having a good uh week man i've been uh i've been busy uh, busy with with just trying to get back to normal. I uh, uh, basically have been. Uh, I I started this new journey of I want to run 20 miles a week, and uh, so I, I figured I right, so if all I gotta do is run four times uh, uh, four times a day. If I run five miles and I do it uh, and I do it uh, four five ten fifteen twenty. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, public school education. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 20 miles a week. That's that's been my goal, bro. And uh, it, it, Florida said, "All right, that's your goal. Bet we're gonna make sure the is about 120 degrees outside." You know what I'm saying? So I've been uh, I've been trying to like stay in shape, uh, run more now that the corona and the gyms are open. I'm just trying to go like I'm literally trying to make up for like the month and a half that I was not training as hard as I should because. During Corona, I ran, but I wasn't doing push-ups or sit-ups or pull-ups or anything like that. And so my body is just getting adjusted to like training like my ass off at the gym and then cardio as well. So um, I'm probably gonna die before uh, I reach my fitness goal. I, I don't even know what my fitness goal is, to be honest with you. I think, no, actually this is what my fitness goal is. Cause I, I heard about, I was listening to, um, when I run sometimes I get tired of listening to rap. So I listen to like motivational speeches. Um, so I guess my goal, what I tell people is like, I wanna give people the best version of me uh, particularly like my wife uh, and like my audience I want to give them the best version of me and so that's really what my goal is to give people my best version of myself my it's like my best version and so the best version like the best version of me that's available right <laughs> and so the only way I can do that is by like you know working out the way I need to so um, it's all coming together man it's hard bro it is like yesterday I was running and like I was dying i was like why am i doing this but the the key for me is is that like i run 2.5 miles out when i go because i run outside and that forces me to run 2.5 miles back in and so all in all i get it done like that so doing five miles a day um uh, for four days a row or four times a, a week um isn't that bad but it is my goal because i typically i don't know what it is that like i have this theory in my head of like the way i train where it's like i want to like I, I kind of say, tell myself like, all right, I don't want to damage my body. Cause like I used to want to be a bodybuilder slash power lifter. Um, but let, let, let me backtrack. I used to want to be a power lifter. And then I started meeting a lot of power lifters, um, like who were like 45 years old and their bodies were in terrible shape. So I was like, I want to be strong, but I don't want to be like 700 pound bench strong. Cause like, I know what that does to your body. And so I kind of limit myself in that sense of like, I don't want to run more than three miles cause I don't want to damage my knees. I don't want to bench more than whatever, because I don't want to damage my chest. But in the same respect, I got to push those levels too, man. So I think right now is like, I, I'm trying to make that effort to like that concerted effort to get out of my comfort zone. Um, and also because like, bro, my cardio is terrible. And a lot of people don't understand is like, yo, like when it comes to like cardio for me, like weights come completely natural to me. Like I've been strong since I was a kid. Like I, I stick to weights like flies to shit, right? Like it's like, it's easy for me. Um, but cardio has always been that thing like cardio and learning Linux are like always been the same thing where it's like I, I learn it I have it good but if I don't keep using it I, I lose it like that and like I'll lose my cardio like that and so um like I have to consistently run in order to keep my cardio bro so um with that and with that in mind man I feel like this is becoming a fitness podcast um no that's pretty much all I got going on in my world outside of just like um planning a wedding getting married and all that other good stuff and uh, and just and just creating more content online bro I hate I hate having to like like no I don't hate it 
but it's just like I, I get in my head about like the videos I'm gonna make um, and like looking at the comments and stuff but um, um uh, I don't know anyways man all right guys anyways today's articles are really interesting I uh, I think they're gonna make people paranoid um, but uh, they're definitely um, some articles that I found really interesting as always these articles are available uh, in the description below if you're watching on YouTube and if you're listening on a major audio podcasting platform uh, ie Spotify and iTunes and all that good stuff it is available in the bio of the podcast man but uh that being said guys first article of the day coming from the fine folks at krebs on security which is a great uh news uh, or blogging platform or blog uh, great security blog that i listen to or what am I talking, dude? Can I talk today? It's a great security blog um, about security. It's available online. It's on security. And it's basically talking about Blue Leaks exposes hundreds of police department files, bro. Man, this is pretty insane what's going on here. Um, so basically, they're reporting that. Um, essentially uh 270 gigabytes worth of police files dating back as far as 1996 i believe it was all the way to june 2020 um basically police documentation files um there's some pretty sensitive stuff in there including like phone numbers email addresses pdf documents images large number of text video csv and zip files man it's like a trevor trove treasure trove of information and primarily it's um uh it's it's from i guess it's the national fusion center of association cyber intelligence network but um what was really interesting is that like they gathered all this data right they hacked this website they grabbed all the data and then they made another website where they dumped all the files and then kind of organized it into like a searchable database so you can actually go into this database and search these documents now now i haven't personally done that because that's i just feel like it's unethical um and it kind of told some lines of legality of actually looking at some of this information um but i did find find some interesting things Twitter about this but just to kind of briefly describe to you guys what's going on here is that like um, a lot of uh, a lot of police agencies and federal agencies they work together and a lot of people don't understand that like your police department is is more powerful than ever these days because um, they're they you know they communicate with each other they have intelligence networks and they share information uh, and intelligence information right and and this is this is this is amazing right because it allows them to you know catch pedophiles it allows them to catch you know uh, you know um, sex offenders human trafficking drug trafficking etc so a lot of these technologies are good but at the same time um, a lot of this intelligence information um, is, is, is third party, right? Meaning, like a lot of law enforcement agencies use different uh, different applications that are, uh, are different vendors and different websites to access this information. And so, eventually, there's a leak in the system, and that's pretty much what we're seeing happen here. And a lot of the information that was leaked out, um, it kind of speaks to how the police department inner workings work. So, some of the fi- the pictures that I found, I kind of want to share them with you real quick because I have some screenshots of them. Um, uh, so, here's like some memos that came. Uh, from uh, from this from this data dump and you can see a lot of this stuff is um, is pretty interesting because it kind of talks about the fact that the FBI um, knows a lot more about people than you think man it's, um, particularly what's what's going on with the Black Lives Matter movements and what you're seeing here is that police in um, particularly um, the FBI provides a lot of information to police departments in regards to um, things that are going on and threats that they should be aware of you know and, and what we saw here is that the, the FBI for example has a good idea of when pro protests are going and uh, going on and what states they're going on they have you know uh, uh twitter users that they follow and people that they say they see as risks that instead of personally going down to those states to investigate those people they send that information to the police departments and so it's it's very it's very helpful for police departments in that sense um and then another thing i saw that was really interesting here is like for example was this this document right here that was sent to the new york police department where it talks about uh intelligence alert to officers assaulted and it kind of talks about this idea uh, or this uh this um this concept at it this is actually pretty crazy but it talks about how um they were using tennis balls that um you know uh looked like normal tennis balls and then actually putting them uh putting concrete inside these tennis balls and then throwing them at police officers right and i was like whoa that's pretty gnarly um but again this is kind of like really interesting what i also found that was really interesting here was this document here um for basically what a subpoena for google looks like so you can see that google does provide information to the fbi with a warrant um, and this is typically what it looks like it shows you know um, this Google subscribers information it talks about you know um, 
uh, what they've been looking at, what type of uh, credit card information they have, etc. So it kind of speaks to like how a lot of these police agencies work, man. And so um, some of the takeaways that I got from this is that like, you know, um, uh, it, it's weird that like, it's not that it's weird it's like one of the takeaways i got from it was this like the concept of like the police know more and the fbi know more about you than you than you know and um especially with twitter and so it, it speaks to like you know how they're following a lot of members of the black lives matter movement um uh in different movements not just blm but anybody who's like from racist extremist groups the fbi is actively monitoring twitter for threats it, this is not a uh if they're doing it no they are actively monitoring twitter Twitter for threats, and there's nothing wrong with that, in, in my opinion, because it's it's it, 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 there is extremists out there, right? My my thing is like where the failure of intelligence might happen there. So a good example of this is like I remember I was doing some work um, for a local police department. Um, this must have been like uh, this must have been like uh, uh, I want to say like ten years ago almost maybe nine years ago five years ago six years ago i was working for no it had to be at least eight years ago why am i caring about the date um but with that being said um i was working for uh, i was doing some work for police department through dell and i remember i overheard a detective talking to a family and he was telling this family that um their son was in a gang and i was like i was like oh wow this is getting serious they're like your son is associated with something called the taylor gang and i was like wait Wiz khalifa and that's what it was it, he had been repping something called taylor gang because of Wiz khalifa and the gang intelligence officer thought that this was a real gang he didn't realize it was based on a rap artist right and that's what i mean by like can can or is the fbi intelligence agencies taking a lot of these information out of context and you know um how are they able to sort through what's a real threat and what's not a real threat and and, and, w and with that being said um you know uh, who are the people who are in charge of this but now more than ever i think people need to be aware of the fact that like a lot of the stuff you put online can be held against you and can uh draw unnecessary attention to you and you have to be able to accept that if you're going to partake in some of these things um or some of these rallies because when you start associating yourself to groups that um and, and, and this is not to say that Black Lives Matter groups, let me give you a better example. Let me give you an example of the anonymous group, right? Being an anonymous hacker. There's a reason why I've never associated myself or I, and I've always kind of put some distance between that myself and those type of groups, right? Because I'm, I'm all for the idea of like um, transparency. I'm all for the idea of like, um, you know, hacktivism in, in a weird way. I'm, I'm for that idea. But the thing is that anonymous themselves has been tied to other things, other extremes that you don't want to be associated with. They, uh, I remember in, when they first started coming out anonymous, they, there was uh, there was reports that they would call in bomb threats to airports in order to prevent things from happening, etc. And those are the type of things you don't want to be associated with organizations who have criminal activity. Because no matter what we want to say, whether it's good or bad, when you hack a server, pull data and dump it, that's illegal. And you don't want to associate yourself with that. And so when you start associating yourself yourself with that on, on these online groups, message boards, things like Twitter, the FBI sees these things and you need to know that like that's going to come back and bite you in the butt or it's going to draw unnecessary attention to you. And like these dumps, these data dumps now more than ever show that. Right. So it's something to take in consideration. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely check out that article from Krebs on Security. I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time on it because, I, I uh, you know, it's 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 a little it's an interesting article that I say to least, man. But uh, that being said, guys, next article is coming from the fine folks at the star dot com. Um, this is uh, the star dot com. And this is another one that's going to make you a little paranoid, bro, um, because I thought it was pretty gnarly uh, when I saw the like how they actually did this. And um, so uh, basically it's a journalist's phone is hacked by a new invisible technique. And all they had to do was visit any website not one website they had to visit any website so long story short this uh, moroccan based uh, journalist talked about how his phone had been hacked and so long story short his phone got infected with some malware and this is actually legitimately because this is some like jason Bourne, next generation the born identity type cia nsa type hacks man this is pretty gnarly right so the way the attack work is this right he he went to go visit a website and then when he went to go visit the website, there was a van that had something called a stingray in the van. And what that van did was intercept that request to go to a website and then redirected him, right? It redirected him to a remote server uh, 
and this is the website that he visited and then it would download an application called Pegasus, man. And Pegasus is designed for law enforcement and uh, for law enforcement to deploy uh, um, on, you know, suspects to monitor their, their devices, see where they're going, etc. man. Now, the thing about this t application is that, again, this isn't these applications are not designed by the government. They're usually third party companies. What do I mean by third party companies? Basically, imagine the same way you subscribe to Netflix. These law enforcement agencies subscribe to these technologies from these companies um, that let them monitor people. And this, these applications are available to any organization that has a, a law enforcement accreditation. And so this Moroccan government or Moroccan authorities were the ones that were behind this attack. And they used an application. I forgot what the name of it on the article. It kind of speaks to what it is. Um, the NSO group, which is the one who designed this application, um, that, partic that this particular application that let them monitor his phone. And like this kind of goes speaks to like man this is how advanced we're getting because you know i always said like bro it, it, it's really hard to hack mobile devices um right 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 off rip but what they did here where they actually intercepted his cell phone traffic because you know they you know how they say you know you see all those sponsors for things like nord vpn and stuff like that they say if you're going to be on a wireless network and you're unprotected you know you're, you can get hacked this guy was on a cellular network they were able to capture redirect him to a website and boom infect his phone and so he kind of talks about in the article how like they were monitoring who he was calling um they had access to his contacts and it wasn't until the amnesty international um looked at his phone that they realized that his phone had been compromised man and so uh it kind of goes to show you that like bro the government these days they're not messing around they're not messing around and especially people who are journalists um who uh in other countries where the government doesn't like them at all this is some of the capabilities that they have to like actually inject code into your phone without you even realizing it and so um that's a really interesting article i, I guess I, I i encourage you to check it out uh, my phone my final thoughts on it man are like yeah man if if you're if you're um if you're going to be doing cuz like the thing about this is that like you know you could be using like applications like WhatsApp you could be using applications that are like encrypted but if the particular piece of malware that they install on your computer, like the government puts on your computer to monitor you, if it's logging the keystrokes, what you're typing into the keyboard, that's it, bro. There's nothing you can do. If they're actually capturing the keyboard strokes, then they're not actually intercepting the messages. They're actually he seeing what you're typing in. Then it's, it's lights out. They're going to be able to see what you're typing. But more importantly, they're going to be seeing where you are at all times if they can access the GPS information, etc. And so um, it, it kind of just speaks to the capability of the government, man. It makes you kind of like it makes you realize that like yo if you want to commit crimes out here good, good good luck with that bro that's some some jason Bourne shit that just went down bro so um that being said man uh, check out that article it's at the star uh dot com all right man so last but not least guys last article is coming from the fine folks literally the fine folks at gq.com man so they're basically talking about how the nba is uh corona uh fighting the coronavirus or here's how the NBA's coronavirus uh, fighting ring might help, man. So um, the NBA is trying to make a comeback. Uh, they're coming to my city, uh, Orlando, Florida, um, and they're basically going to be quarantining players here. So I think it's kind of it's kind of crazy what they're doing to these NBA players because they said we're going to fly you into Disney, but you can't go to Disney. You have to stay on this campus. You're not allowed to move around, and you're basically going to be here for 16 weeks. They're sequestering these NBA players as if they were on jury duty for an oj simpson case bro and so they're kind of talking about how like all right how are we able going how are we going to be able to further you know monitor these players and etc and so they're basically talking something uh, about something called the aura ring man so i kind of looked into this and this is basically what the aura ring looks like man it's basically going to be a ring that uh, nba players can wear on their on their finger because it's a ring it's freaking stupid Edwin. um <laughs> but it has some sensors in it uh, and particularly heart rate sleeping and and um, kind of just like uh, mental, mental, uh, mental, uh, uh, like cognitive function. It could detect if they, uh, um, if they're having troubles, trouble sleeping, their heart rate, etc. And so, what this article from GQ kind of talks about is how the NBA um, can use some of this information that they're gathering from players to kind of figure out how players are doing and if there's early symptoms of coronavirus on these NBA players, and so they can early detect up to like three plus days, man. And so, um, 
they're able to detect the coronavirus up to three days in advance. And that's pretty cool to see how they're able to attract athletes like that, man. I think it's going to be one of those things where it's like you're seeing now more than ever like wearable technology. Now, the one thing that's weird for me on this is that like you think that like the best option might be to go with like the Apple Watch, right? Because the Apple Watch has the ability to tell like on um, the heart rate. You think there'd be like some temperature sensors on the Apple Watch. Um, and a lot of those Apple Watches have GPS and Wi-Fi built into them and cellular capabilities so you can actually tell you know uh, basically triangulate where the athlete has been etc on that campus it's like an ankle monitor from the police but um what they kind of talk about in the article is that like you know a lot of nba players have the option to wear the ring but they don't necessarily need to wear the ring and another thing that they talk about is that like the only data that can be accessed is just very very basic data because there is a lot of privacy concerns when it comes to this and that's basically what i have been seeing and when it comes to a lot of these coronavirus tracking applications is that like you people have to subject themselves to privacy right and it's like how much information are you willing to give to the government in order to better track yourself right like to better uh prevent the spread of this virus you know and and the government wants people to like you know willingly submit you know where they've been etc the government wants to track people in real time but at what expense at the expense of not spreading this virus and so with with what the nba is doing here i don't think it's a good concept it, i i don't think sequestering players for 16 weeks is the best idea i don't understand what it like i don't understand like you know what it's going to solve um I, I just don't think it's a good idea. I think that like, do they have to play? Yes. Do we have to be entertained? Yes. But I think the best option would probably be to strap these players with Apple watches and be able to monitor them like that, checking temperatures, etc. cetera. Um, I think this whole ring concept is, is just one of those things that like, there's so many players right now trying to come to the market with devices to help prevent the spread of corona and i think this particular product kind of falls in that category but what does it really minimize and like what the adaption of it has to be in order for it to in order for that stuff to actually work correctly man so that being said man check out that article at gq man but with that being said guys uh these are the articles uh for today's episode man i appreciate you guys checking out the podcast man as always make sure to subscribe and like the video if you have any questions for me leave them below and until next time guys my name is edwin pagan i appreciate y'all watching thanks for checking it out and until next time, take care, everyone. Peace. Guys, what are you doing? Watching my dad's channel. <laughs> You're watching your dad's YouTube channel?